Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you being here um, to learn about really important solution, uh, really important tool to have in the toolbox. That's our HDMI fixer. So this is going to be a solution for signal repair, HDMI signal repair. But HDMI is always so tricky, right? What's the problem that you're experiencing? Um, it's hard to deduce. What is the problem so that you could then uh, conclude how to fix the problem? So we're going to go over a little bit of that today and, uh, and show you the products that can uh, really be the Swiss Army knife to get you out of those situations. And uh, so here's some of the common problems. Has this ever happened to you? You know, the top left display there is showing no signal and it says, check your cabling, right? Well, you check your cabling and everything's on. All the LEDs are active, right? Uh, all the lights are on, but nobody's home. Has that ever happened to you? Uh, well, if you've been doing HDMI, professional installation for a while, I'm sure the answer is yes. And you know, the, the thing is, digital video installation, there are going to be pitfalls from time to time. That's why at Key Digital, we build all the tools into the products to get you out of those pitfalls, ensuring that you can have a successful installation that's reliable going forward. Do your job, do the installation, be happy with it, be confident with it without having to do a number of uh, RMAs or roll out the van multiple times, right? That's all these tools that we can fix for you. We look over at the top right here, example. You know, we're looking at an image and the image is there, the audio is there, but the color is just not quite right. Color spacing problems, okay? These could come from a uh, misread in the color spacing format. HDMI uh, comes from a DVI foundation, right? And uh, it's kind of a combination of DVI, which is from the computer world where they had RGB color spacing and component video in the consumer world that had YCBCR color spacing, okay? And, uh, and so, there's still these different color spacing formats out there. Um, and sometimes there's a misread and this is the resultant. So we have a solution for that, of course. And how about the bottom center? You know, you look at that picture and you might think, oh, this is an old coax cable feed or you're trying to watch, uh, you know, uh, your cable uh, pay-per-view, but you don't have a pay-per-view subscription, right? It looks rather old school, but actually this still happens with HDMI, digital video. Typically that is a signal, uh, that is a the resultant, I should say, of a broken DDC signal. DDC is your digital data channel, I think is what it stands for. Oh boy, I'm getting stumped. Better have another sip of coffee, right? but it's actually the channel where EDID and HDCP travel together in the uh, kind of the software exchange, the communication exchange of HDMI. So uh, we actually have some really great videos, some content online called Digital Video Fundamentals, where you can really dive in deeper to what each of these layers are and to gain a better understanding, and we're gonna do a little bit more of a deep dive here as well, just some suggested viewing for you. Let's introduce you to the fixer for these problems, KD Fix 418A, okay? So fix is in the name, what else is in the name? The number four, well, we're kind of using it cute there, but 18 refers to 18 gigabits per second bandwidth support and solutions. And A stands for audio. So it's a fix for 18 gigabit per second and audio problems. So on the fix 418A, we see front, back, side one, and side two. There is audio de-embedding. There is 18G to 10G 
bandwidth compression, okay? Uh, so the word compression is missing there, but it sports 18G bandwidth and it sports 10G bandwidth and downward. And there is even a cool tool that we'll show you more details about. There's input boost and signal correction. We have some diagrams showing you what that's good for. It supports HDCP 2.2 and it has the full buffer uh, Key Digital's proprietary full buffer system built in. So let's show you some more of what's inside the fixer and show you some, uh, try to provide pictures and uh, graphical examples of what each of these tools does for you. Well, number one, you're going to see that there is forced hot plug detection on this product. So to understand how we force hot plug detection or why we would, it's important to know what is forced hot plug detection. Well, forced hot plug detection, hot plug detection originates from the days of VGA computers. And if your computer supported hot plug detection, it meant that you could have your computer connected to a monitor. You could disconnect the cabling from that monitor, plug it into a new monitor, and the computer would support that adjustment because perhaps the different monitors have different capabilities, right? And that's what that refers to. Now, in the HDMI world, what is HPD, hot plug detection? Well, imagine here in this image that we've got on the screen that the Blu-ray player is not always, or is, 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 is always on. The Blu-ray player is always on. This could be your cable box, sat box as well. A lot of times people leave those on around the clock. They got their DVR running, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or a desktop computer connected to a monitor. Now, a lot of times we leave those source devices on, but we do not leave the HDMI display on. Well, the display, so without it being on, the source is not outputting HDMI audio and video to that display. And it's not outputting because it knows it does not have a live partner on the other end of the cable. And when that display, that monitor turns on, it sends hot plug detection down line. That's the loop going this direction to the source. And it provides that voltage informing that source that it has a live partner now. Now the source must reciprocate. So the source sends the voltage backward to the display, also informing it that it has a live partner. And so this loop completing would be a successful exchange of hot plug detection, which then would lead us to the next steps of heated handshaking, et cetera. But that, and we'll get to that in a moment, but the, Voltage going from the source to the display is equally as important as the voltage going from the display to the source. If the voltage were not going, not were not being received successfully by the display, that's when you end up with this type of message on your screen. Okay, no signal. Or if you've got a projector and it just keeps scrolling through the inputs, never landing on the connection that you're hoping to view, it's exactly this problem, okay? It doesn't detect the voltage there. So yes, there may be uh, an extender there, there may be a cable there, there may be everything, and it may the source may be pushing the signal, the AV system may be pushing signal to that display, to that projector. But if there's no voltage detected at the display or projector, you're gonna end up in this sort of situation. And, uh, there's your solution. You install the key digital device. Okay. Typically, you know, there's not really an exact place where these install, uh, these fixers are installed. You're going to see a number of application examples. And, um, but by installing this, setting that forced HPD to the on position, we're going to light up that voltage. And that projector sees the voltage and says, Oh, wow. Lo and behold, there's audio and video here that I'm going to display. Okay. So uh, huge, huge problem solver. 
And for my knowledge, I think Key Digital is the only one doing this. So <clears throat> next we have a tool for EDID handshaking, another super, super valuable tool. What is EDID? You know, before we tell you how we could resolve problems for you, et cetera, you got to understand what it is. Well, EDID is a, just, it's referred to as the handshake, okay? What is the definition? You could read it here. Data structure provided by a digital display to describe its capabilities to the connected video source, okay? If you're taking notes, excellent. If you're not, remember that it's the handshake. And you see the arrows in these two diagrams, whether it's consumer or commercial displays, monitors, applications, EDID is gonna be a part of both of those. And the arrows are very important. It's a very important misconception that the handshake goes to the display. It does not. <clears throat> the handshake goes from the display to the source because your source device, let's say you have a 4K source, but your display, your projector is only 1080p capable. That's why the handshake has to go from the display to the source. The display provides that handshake to the source saying, I'm capable of supporting 1080p video with two channel audio. So even if the source is capable of 4K video with 7.1 audio, it's gonna be a top down approach where they're gonna finally see eye to eye and they're gonna make that handshake at the highest possible, you know, the best possible resolution, the best possible audio format, unless you go into the settings menu and adjust it otherwise, right? But this is the handshake. This is done behind the scenes. This is done in a blink of an eye in HDMI. And a lot of times you don't, if you have a problem, you're not going to be able to even get as far as turning on the display and rolling through the menu with the remote because you won't have a picture or you won't have audio. So the handshake goes backward from the display to the source. And it seems easy when you have one-to-one, -one, right? But that's not the world that you do your business in. That's not the world that Key Digital does our business in. And it's not the world that your clients have hired you to, uh, to work in, right? So here's an example of a failed eated handshaking. Your video is fine at the display, but you don't have any audio, right? Because the handshake is not just the video, remember, it's the video resolution and the audio format as well. Well, you know, we see this from time to time. I'll give an example. I'm going to come back here. Let's, let's, let's uh, add to this analogy or this story. Sometimes we get calls from a direct TV, uh, an install where they have direct TV and they're going to a 4K monitor. The 4K is the latest and greatest. Well, though, believe it or not, a lot of those direct TV boxes in the marketplace today are still, they're, they're, they're 12 plus years old. There was no such thing as 4K at the time that those direct TV boxes were released into the marketplace. And so, what could be happening in this exact scenario is the DirecTV receives a 4K handshake from the source and it outputs 1080p, or it, it basically, it, it defaults. It says, hey, 4K, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to give you DVI, right? It defaults back to its root foundation. As I said before, the foundation of HDMI, DVI, digital video interface, DVI, compatible with HDMI except for no audio. Okay. And so the source is outputting video, but there's no audio at the display. That's where this tool comes in very, very handy. The EDID adjustment rotary. Refer to the manual there and you're going to see all of the options. Okay. Um, setting zero allows you to copy from the output, which is typically your display. So it's as though that the source and the display were connected one-to-one -one and shaking hands directly, except for we collect, we 
receive the EDID handshake. Our key digital device receives the EDID handshake from the display. It stores that handshake in the software and it provides it to the source. So everything is more one-to-one -one topology, one-to-one -to -one connectivity. Things are more localized that way and it's much more reliable. In addition to that, though, you have 15 other EDID handshake options from 1080i with three audio formats to 1080p, 4K at 10G, 4K at 18G, and a number of DVI handshakes in case that is what you're looking for. And so this is going to be a problem solver. You might say, you know, I don't know why there's an issue. I got a brand new 4K source, a brand new 4K display, but you know, they're not seeing eye to eye. We have 15 different options in here. One of them is gonna save the day for you. And I should note also that this EDID library, starting to see a lot of changes now in the various key digital products. And so, uh, um, you know, why is it changing? Because the formats and the, 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 the resolutions are improving. And so, uh, so we're constantly evolving with the technology. Now, let me show you something else that's super important that's inside this product, right? It's the TMDS reclocking. TMDS, again, you see the meaning there, what it stands for, but it's truly just the video and audio layer of HDMI, okay? The video and audio layer. And we know that HDMI is digital. So what does it mean? Digital ones and zeros, right? And we look at this diagram here. This is your transition minimized differential signal, your TMDS, your video and audio. Beautiful thing about HDMI is video and audio always travel together. So if video is there, but audio is not, you know, it's not a TMDS problem. What was it a moment ago? It was an EDID problem, okay? So video and audio, they travel together in HDMI. But HDMI, you know, you think about the limitations of HDMI, and the various products that have been released to address those limitations, like HDMI, HD base T extenders, et cetera, AV over IP. Well, here's a prime example why. On the left, we have that HDMI signal at only one meter. And we see this helix form, okay? The ones of the ones and zero digital signal, the ones are the lines in that helix form. The zeros are those open eyes, okay? And look, you know, the smaller that eye gets, well, the signal's gotta pass through. And if after three meters on the right-hand side, so that's 10 feet long, three meters, we already see the separation of the ones and zeros. And so what happens is, those ones and zeros aren't clear ones and zeros anymore to the display. They look a little more like squiggly lines. And if you can't tell what is a one and a zero, then you could lose that data, which is represented by a pixel in your screen, right? So has this ever happened to you? Digital sparkle, especially on a gray or black screen, you will see the digital sparkle, okay? And so if you see that, you should never just leave good enough alone and say, all right, we're fine, okay? Because the thing about HDMI is when you, when you do HDMI it, it's, and you do it right, it's always going to look perfect, right? Even if you have a long cable, you need to, you know, you've got cables that are specially engineered, perhaps they're directional, or perhaps you're using an extender and they're especially engineered to make sure you don't have this kind of problem. But if you have this problem, your toes are hanging off of a cliff. And what happens with cliffs over time from wind erosion and water or the cabling inside the HDMI cable untwisting, the, cape, the cliff erodes, right? And now you fall off the cliff. <laughs> That's why you can't be comfortable there. <laughs> so, um, here is what TMDS, key digital TMDS reclocking does for you. 
you know, and it's not just three meters of HDMI, right? Again, we don't live in that world typically, a short cable source display done. We live in the world of many layers of HDMI connectivity. We live in the world of a variety of source and display devices integrated into a single system. And some of those products have poor handling. So what TMDS, Key Digital TMDS reclocking does for you is it takes that signal that is poor, that looks a little more like squiggly lines, it determines what's a one and a zero, and it will regenerate, reclock that signal to create brand new ones and zeros, okay? And this is very important. Of course, that's great, sounds great, right? But the location of it, this occurs on the input of all these key digital devices, okay? These fixer devices and more devices. And since it's on the input, that means that the signal goes in, you got a long cable or many layers of connectivity, it goes into the key digital device and it is output as a brand new signal again, offering you this, the, uh, or in other words, repairing, fixing that signal for you. Here's the beautiful thing. These features, they're not just on the key digital fixer. We're gonna show you a little bit more about the fixer because there's more tools that are unique to the fixer but these features, the full buffer system, full buffer technology is built into all key digital devices, okay? We don't put the name key digital on it if it doesn't have these features, because this is what allows us to assure reliability with key digital products, key digital systems, and that's why you purchase key digital. And now let's get back to the FIX 418A, shall we? There's more features here that are unique to this product. And as I mentioned in the opening, the A stands for audio. One problem that happens with HDMI now is, you know, the race to zero devices are getting smaller, smaller, smaller. The connectivity is getting less, less, less. We have a fix for that audio de-embed, both analog and digital audio de-embed are built into the FIX 418A, okay? Now keep in mind, this is not a preamp, so there's no volume control or EQ. There's no formatting like, you know, surround to two channel down convert or anything like that. There's also some solutions for long HDMI cabling runs, as we've talked about, right? In addition to the TMDS reclocking. Here's, and, 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 and to my point earlier of, you know, there's not, we don't say fix, install the FIX 418 right at the beginning of the run, long run or right at the end of the long run. But there's two different uh, settings that could be applied. One is called source bus boost. So we take the input signal. You have a short HDMI cable from their source or AV system. It goes into the FIX 418A with source boost applied. It just gives that hotter signal at the beginning of that HDMI run, okay? So that you could go that long distance if you're experiencing signal loss, if you're experiencing uh, lost pixels, okay? What about signal correction? You install it at the end of a long run and that TMDS reclocking corrects that signal for you, okay? And we see here 18G in, 18G out, 18 gigabits per second is extremely, extremely heavy. So that's why the fixer is needed more often than not. And that's also why it took a long time to uh, have long length, 18 gigabit per second HDMI cables released into the marketplace. And now you do see them and they're over fiber optic, aren't they? Like a active optical copper hybrid, like our KDAOCH active, active optical copper hybrid cables that you can find on our website. Um, but not all 4K was 18 gigabits per second. You may recall when 4K first came out, it was only 10.2 gigabits per second, okay? The first gen 4K. Some folks now call faux K because it's, uh, you know, it's still out there and you get the resolution, but you don't get the other chroma subsampling, 
deep color, 60 frames per second that the modern 4K provides you with results in a higher quality, especially the HDR aspect, okay? So what about for those systems, those displays where they're only 10 gigabit per second, but the system has other displays that are 18G? Well, we built a fix for this problem into the fix 418A as well. You can have that 4K source or 4K content feed in to the fixer. You apply the 18G to 10G down convert, set it to the on position. And the first gen 4K was compatible with 4K resolution, right? It wasn't resolution that was the issue. It was the chroma sampling, the 444, 420, et cetera. That all came into play later on the uh, later generation 4K. Um, and so when you apply this 18G to 10G, we take that 444, we bring it down to 420. And now the bandwidth is within the 10 gigabit per second range. And the signal is within the capabilities of those first gen 4K displays and systems. The beautiful thing about applying this setting, setting it to the on position is the down conversion is only applied when the incoming signal is greater than 10.2 gigabits per second. So we're not reducing the color chroma subsampling if the signal is lower than 10G. So you don't have to worry about, oh, when do I put it on? Do I, you know, is this a dynamic thing? We handle that dynamically, automatically in the product for you. So this is a very nice feature. And if you're not familiar with chroma subsampling, it basically refers to, again, remember the old days, a, a component video, your red, green, blue. Well, the green was the black and white, the uh, luminescence of the image. The red and blue were the color, the chroma of the, um, of the signal. And so, in 444, if you take a four by four grid of pixels, every single one of those pixels has image plus color. And in 420, it's uh, like uh, every other pixel has picture plus color. And you can find more details on that. There are classes available online from Cedia, for example, has a wonderful, wonderful video on that. Um, so uh, there's some great intelligent folks there who are providing that information, but we have a great resource of intelligent, um, endearing and charismatic folks on our sales team as well. Um, if you need this product or if watching this video has said to you, hey, I'm using Key Digital now because now I know what's behind the scenes and I know that these folks are handling it correctly and you wanna get started with us, please reach out to sales at keydigital.com or if you just want to see what other kind of products we have, now that you see the secret sauce of Key Digital, you just head over to www.keydigital.com. You could create your own Key Digital University profile there, and you'll have access to all of our training contents, including that digital video fundamentals course that I earlier alluded to. Once again, thanks so much for joining us.